Pro, the fact that you can take these beams, attach them to any object in your scene, and use those beams. And really, I mean, without these beams here, this would not look too good, okay? It would look like it was missing something. But with these beams here, this does kind of liven up the scene a bit, All right? Again, even though it's a very simple scene, you can see the effect that having these light beams have on this particular image. All right, so that almost wraps everything up. There were a couple things I missed that I'm just going to cover now. So at this point, I'm just going to go new, and I'm not going to save this scene, so I'm just going to click no, clear that scene. So right now what I want to do is focus on a couple features that I overlooked earlier on. I do want to touch on these features because they are pretty big features and there are some things you should really be aware of. And I'm just going to start off with the presets and I'm going to load up the 5 high preset. And as that is loading up, I'm going to pause the video. So I have the 5 high preset loaded up in here and what I wanted to talk about within this preset is the fact that in the five presets, okay, that's five draft, medium, and high, you will find that within these lights here, beams are attached to lamps, all right? So notice that I have a lamp here, and since the beam is attached to a lamp, when you animate the beam, you wanna move the lamp. Now, another thing you wanna be aware of is the fact that we do have different rows of lamps. But before I get to the, these different rows of lamps, another thing you should know is that the 5 preset has this unique feature where the beam is attached to the lamp, and also in the 7 preset, you'll find the same thing going on. But if you take a look here, we have a lamp, and there's no beam or light coming out of it. In the stage and lamps preset, you can turn on the lamp, by going to center lamps on. All right, so this is the center row of lamps. And I could turn off the center row too. This happens to be the back row. All right, it's just important to know where these lamps are positioned. So this is the back row of lamps. And then around here, in the front, we have lamps too. All right, so there are front lamps. And there they are. You can see them. They're illuminated now. So knowing where those lamps are positioned is important. And the reason for that, if I zoom out here a little bit, get all four of these lamps into this scene. And the reason why that's important is because, let's say I did have want to select the front lamps. All right, now... I can't select the front lamps in my scene unless I really scroll my camera around, and sometimes you just don't want to move your camera. And so you would go to the Scene tab, and in the Stage Effects Pro folder, in the Master Handle here, under Stage and Lamps, and then Stage Props, you'll find all these lamps are organized nicely in these folders. So. If I wanted to select something in the front row, I would go expand the front row folder. I would choose the, the lamp I want to select within here. All right, now to animate the lamp, I would select lamp 9. Okay, I would select this to animate the lamp. But let me illustrate this with the back row since this is what we're seeing in the, the scene window here. So in the back row, let's say I wanted to select this lamp. I just happen to know that that is lamp number 2. And if I expand this node for lamp 2, well, actually, I don't have to expand the node. I can just select lamp 2 here. And now I can go into my parameters tab and animate that. So without selecting anything in my scene, I can just use my scene navigation to do that. So that's why it's kind of important to know that this is back row. We have center row and front row. Another thing you should know is the fact that you can put a beam on any lamp that is showing in here. All right, unfortunately, in these tutorials, I'm not going to get around to that, but that is covered in the documentation, and perhaps in the future, I can produce a video to show you how to do that. Another thing 
I want to talk about is the fact that you can animate these lamps. And one thing I didn't talk about, though, which is kind of helpful when you're animating is the use of Puppeteer. So let me try to get good position on these themes here so you can see what's going on here. So in Puppeteer, let's say I wanted to animate this. And Puppeteer just makes animation easy in Test Studio. But in Puppeteer, all I have to do is select that lamp node and I can, in edit mode, I can just add a dot here. And then I can position this lamp pretty much wherever I want it to move to. Say right there. And then hit record. And then I can animate that. And then I can go back to my first frame here. I can select this lamp here, let's say, in edit mode. Can add a dot here. I can select a spot for that, say right there. And then I can hit record. And I can simply just animate that too. Pressing play. See how those are being animated now. And one thing I do want to mention is that the animation does look a little choppy. And that's because I got a lot going on here. I got OpenGL and I'm rec screen recording at the same time. So it's actually, that studio is skipping frames for me. So we don't see a smooth animation, but if I were to render this, this would render a really smooth animation. Another thing I wanna mention is that when you're working with a camera, all right, you either wanna go in here, and this is just a tip, okay? You wanna select the default camera. If you're gonna be doing animations, if you don't want your camera to get animated accidentally, you can go in here, and I know you can't see this, but in this drop-down menu, you can come down here to lock and choose lock node, all right? And then that will lock all the transforms. Notice I have a lock now on my default camera, and then that way you won't accidentally animate your camera, because I guarantee you, you're going to end up doing that, okay? It's a lot easier than trying to remember to go to the first keyframe before you move your camera, but now that my camera is locked, I can't move it at all. So we can just go unlock node and that'll unlock everything. And then I can move my camera to wherever I want it to, to be. All right, so I just unlocked the camera actually to, to set this up in a different position here. Let's zoom this out a little bit. Maybe right to about there. All right, and then I can go to my camera again. And this is just how it is with animation, you know, especially when you have animation where you have auto, auto keyframing, which is a nice feature, but you gotta be aware that anything you move is gonna be automatically animated. And you got to be aware of that. Lock, lock node. So just a quick tip there about Puppeteer. And I'm also wondering if perhaps if we select one of these lamps, if we can copy the, the animation to another lamp. I'm not exactly sure about that. So let me just experiment with this. And I, I'm going to just choose that lamp. I'm going to choose Edit copy settings, and I know that this lamp isn't being animated, and let's see if I can paste those, paste that animation there. And I believe that did work. And it did, so there's another tip there, and I was just experimenting, see? So you can really discover a lot of neat things, so what I did was I actually just animated this, I copied the settings, and then I applied it to this lamp. So I can do that with this too. I can click here, and actually go first keep frame, click on this lamp, go to edit, copy settings, you can select that lamp and do edit paste settings, and now I have all my lamps animated. So, that's what's going on with the lamps here. And 
one more thing. I'm going to go to File, 